Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Laruna Age of Kingdoms. Not to be confused with the RPG they made, this is the board game which is titled Age of Kingdoms here. In Laruna Age of Kingdoms, you're going to be playing as kingdoms in your own specific kingdom and there's different kingdoms you can select throughout the game all these different player maps here available and what you're trying to do is vie for favor of the gods the gods have chosen in this land to only have one ruling kingdom for their new world order basically and after a number of years whoever has attained the most favor with them is going to be the winner and be able to stay alive while all the rest are going to be dispersed of in some way now of course you're going across the board and as the rounds continue depending on the number of the length you want to play the game at the end of that year, the year length, whoever has the most points or favor is going to win the game. Now, what you're doing is you're trying to gather different resources throughout the game, and you're basically warlords or faction lords looking across the battleground, trying to determine where you should go to war, where you should, where you should do uh, trades and factions, that kind of stuff, while all at the same time gathering markets, agriculture, magic, defenses, army, and your religion. You're going to stockpile things in your treasury as well as make trade routes, and it shows you your available units. And you go across the board, and as you do that, you're going to discover new lands and obtain new new characters throughout the land so maybe you're going to go over here to the moor and capture this location and there's different characters you can select from them and you're going to be able to choose and select those as you go throughout the game and that is the basic idea of the game the game is a huge intake of like an rpg style tactical mission game where you're looking across the board and maneuvering your units around let me go ahead and show you what it looks like and the basic game components okay so age of kingdoms is a big game so we're going to talk about one side of the board and then the next side of the board and as you can see this has a map that is going to go span throughout this entire area here but not only is there a map we're gonna talk about all of the contents in the game first of all you're gonna get player boards and there's six different types and they all have their own unique aspects to them as well as their marketing agriculture magic defense armies and religions and with these you're going to actually be able to upgrade them with these tiles here these are their little upgrade tiles you get your attack your defense die and your special die and certain characters in the game are gonna have special stuff going on that you can use to roll those you can have character standees for every faction as well as the little bases you've got workers which you'll use to put on these spaces. They're kind of like that aspect of worker placement. These little tokens here are going to go on your upkeep as well as your stability of the realm. And as you decrease in stability or increase, you're going to move that there. And as you increase in upkeep, you're going to do that as well. So it'll give you more actions, but it will also have you cost more to feed your people. Now these little tokens over here for each and every different color, you see they're going to be places where you're going to put on the different realms or regions that are basically occupations. So that is, means that, that they own this area specifically. You also have your agenda cards for every single faction, as well as for each faction, you're going to have your own unique units, which are represented right here, and also show you what they look like, as well as the different stats on all of them. Not only that, but on this side of the board, you're going to have gold and favor. And on the other side, I'll show you the food and the magic. These green cards here are going to be your commanders, as well as their cards here. And you're to be able to use these in different portions of the game as well and you're going to choose one of these along with their cards along with one of your factions and all of the cards that go with them so if you choose yellow and you choose this you're going to get all of this together along with one of the commanders so you kind of have a nice mix up let me go ahead and show you the other side of the board and what else you get in the game now on to the other side of the board as you can see the rest of the map including this little tracker here this is for the years they get the magic tokens here and then you've got the food tokens over there you're going to be using those periodically throughout the game to feed your people the gold is going to be used to buy certain Certain things, favor is what you need for favoring the gods, as well as magic to play cards and whatnot. Over here, as you can see, these are the different locations on the board, such as this one here. You got the Black Moor, and then you got something like this, the Field of Nervid, and I can't say most of the names here because they're all crazy and like fantastical. But it's going to include neutral units as well as agenda cards that you're going to be able to shuffle into your deck when you clean these certain areas. And here are the different characters for each and every single one of the regions. So you're going to be able to acquire new and different units as you play each and every every game depending on the locations that you conquer. You've also got these different dimension or outworld cards here which you're going to be able to use as you go into different locations. It'll take you to different spaces throughout different dimensions which are really cool as well as your island tokens or harbor tokens whatever you like to call or cards I should say and these will also give you certain things and you're also going to be able to play these red cards instead of playing some of your uh, agenda token uh, cards and something agenda card you can do something like a military alliance you can go to war you can do a trade agreement as well as a 
military alliance, or if you get destroyed, you can get sacked, which is nasty. Um, you're also going to be able to get these cards here. These one here go throughout the game. When you go from 5, 10, 15, and 20 years, you're going to be able to play these cards, and different events are going to happen. All units not within their kingdom's d uh, domain suffer one wound, so you can have things like that happen. They're basically random things that will occur throughout the game. Uh, these are all the different standees that are going to be present for these character, these uh, locations here, and of course, they'll most likely be miniatures, as far as I'm aware, that you'll be using the board, but for here, I have standees for the prototype. Over here, you can have a bunch of different tokens, and I'll try and explain as best as I can. This one here is going to be your uh, weaponry, uh, weaponsmith tokens. You've got your armor smith tokens. This is duration tokens, so the cards that last a certain long uh, period of time, you'll put those on there. These are going to be the damage taken on your cards or units. You're going to be placing these on there, and these are going to be for damage based on the location, so when you damage a location to try and take it over, you'll be placing these on there. Over here, we got garrison tokens, which are going to help with your defenses. And then these last things here are basically for use for your army or your war room. They're going to allow you to have more and more units as you control these. But that is the main components of the game. There's a lot there. I'm going to try and address as much as I can as we go throughout it. But that's the basic uh, different things you can see in the game of Laruna. Okay, so you know it's in the game, Laruna. Now let me go ahead and show you what you're going to be getting and how you set the game up. So obviously you're going to choose one of the six different factions and they're all very unique. They're all going to come with a different amount of starting magic, agriculture, and markets, as well as uh, your, your army and defenses, which change periodically throughout the game, as well as your starting favor. So favor of the gods, this is what you need to win the game. Not only that, but you're also going to be taking all your cards you're going to be getting, as well as your different workers. You're going to be getting three to start with, as well as setting up your stability and your upkeep with these little tokens here. You're going to get all of your units and set them to the side along with their cards. And you're going to get to choose a commander, this commander right here, along with his specific types of cards. These are special cards that you can choose one of and then get the rest of the only, uh, only have that one for the entire game, so it's a very special card. You're also then going to be getting the deck of basically magical spells you'll be able to use throughout the game, and they'll have their cost of magic and what they do. You'll take one of these guys and one of the locations, and then you're going to set all the board up. And that's the basic aspect. After that, you're going to have your little location, which is where each one of these places starts off at, and then the turns will begin after choosing a first player. Let me go ahead and show you the board and how it looks set up and how the starting aspects go, just so you get a little more in-depth of how it works. Okay, so we're going to talk about setup, specifically for one singular player, although this will work for all players during the game, the beginning to start up. I'm going to choose a, 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 a faction. This is going to be Darko... Gareth, and I hope I said that right. You're going to be getting this board here, along with all the upgrade tiles that you can add. So as you increase um, in your war room or whatever, you're going to be putting these things on there to increase the value of those locations for when you put uh, workers on there. It'll give you certain things. You're also going to be taking all the cards, which are the army factions, and they tell you what they do. There's uh, about three different types, and uh, they all have different unique aspects to them, as well as you're going to be taking these cards here, your agenda cards, and they're going to do stuff as well throughout the game. You'll be using these to play uh, during your turn. You're going to take your standees and your little characters, these guys here along with the standees, and setting them aside. You're going to start the game with three workers, and you're going to be able to place them on the board at a certain period of time, where you're going to then be able to access these specific abilities here. You're also going to take these guys here, which you'll be able to gain later, which will cost upkeep, and you're going to take these little tokens here and put them next to your trade routes, so eventually you'll be using these to trade with other players, as well as even the computer or AI. Finally, you're going to take these things here, place them on the stability as well as the upkeep, and these things here will be set to the side for whenever you obtain new locations on the board here, which I'll show you after I take everything off. Not only that, though, when everybody's done setting this up, they're also going to be taking one of these uh, commanders here, and there's a bunch of different ones. There's six different types, and they all come with spells, which are the blue cards here, and then they're going to come with virtues, and there's three virtues for each of these guys. You're going to select one of them. So if I wanted to take the dragon-looking, uh, this is like the Draco Garoth faction, and maybe I want to take the dragon with it, so I'd have uh, both of them. It looks similar, but who knows what they actually do together, if they work well or not together. But this one here is... Megalander, I hope I said that right, but it's going to give you a special ability. He says whenever any unit attacks, all of your units control within the same territory have their uh, revolt tokens immediately removed. So that's really useful 
when uh, you're not able to pay for your units, it'll it'll give you that little benefit. I'll explain that in a bit, though. You're also going to take these three. These are the uh, different virtues, and you're going to select one of them so nobody else knows what you got. And you'll put that over here, along with taking all of the respective magical cards with the faction as well. So now you've got your magic, you've got your agendas here, and you've got your characters here. So in your hand at the beginning of the game, you should have one of these, you're going to have two of these magical cards, and then you're going to have three of these agendas. And on your turn, you'll be able to play one of these cards, depending on their cost and whatnot, whether they have a duration or not. And there's symbols here that show you if it has a duration or not, and whether you're going to be using different tokens. After everybody's gotten their commander, chosen their virtue, as well as set up their board and everything ready, then the game is going to begin. All right, so your setup's pretty much done other than taking your territory marker and placing it on your location. For instance, I'm playing as the Draco Goraith, so I'm going to place this on that location on the map. After that, you're going to establish who the first player is. Make sure you have all your cards in your hand, three, two, and one. It's easy to remember it. And then you're going to place all your stuff down your board, including your three different workers. You can place them anywhere on the board, provided you're able to, based on your stability of the of the, your populace. Not only that, but you're also going to have all of your starting pieces, all your gold, magic, and whatnot. You're going to put that in your treasury, which I'll show you in a second here. Your actions on your turn are as follows. You can play cards from your hand, so you can play a magic card, or you can play a... Um, your agenda cards, or you can simply uh, spend a gold or a magic to draw a new magic or agenda card. You can move your workers around, provided you're willing to get rid of some of your stability. You can upgrade your kingdom or your population, and your population you can recruit units by spending gold and or whatever it is required to buy those units based on the unit's cards, which are represented right here. I'll tell you what you need to do to buy them. Or you can establish trade routes as well as military alliances. There are quite a few things you can do, and then after that phase happens, uh, every Everybody takes that turn, so there's the two phases, everybody will take that uh, that turn, and then you're going to move on to the map phase. Before we move into the map phase, let me show you what it looks like on the board and how you're going to do that. So back on the board, here we are, and as you can see, I've already gone ahead and set up my starting workers, and you can set them up in any of these locations, provided that your stability is that color. So this row here is going to be green, this can be green or blue, and this can be green, blue, or red. So even if you're in the red stability, you can still place here. These are your starting resources you're going to gather and place right over here, as well as your defenses an army these are the values you're going to have them at to start with and they can go up and down depending on what happens as well as whether you place these things on here or not they're not currency they don't keep going up you're just going to keep a static so if this is three you're always going to have three unless you get the war room it's you'll have five and you're gonna be able to use these for having more units throughout the game which you'll be placing on this board here and also the favor which is the most important thing it's what you're going to be using to uh win the game you need to have the favor of the gods so i've already shown you the starting uh different aspects of the game. You're going to get the starting gold, the food, and whatnot. But not only that, you're also going to get your starting currency that's based on the units you've placed down. So there's one gold for the uh, gold mines here. There is one mana for the mana pools here. And then there's irrigation one, which will give you three food. And obviously, uh, this is better than these two here, but that's because you have to be in the green as far as stability goes to be able to place your workers here. Now, after you've done that, you've gathered all of your resources to begin, you're going to start taking your actions, and so you would go first, and then the next person. And you can take as many of these actions as you want, but certain ones require only a certain amount of times you can do that, such as playing cards. As you see here, you've got the different cards here. You can always play this one card, but once you've played the Virtue card, that's it. It's a special card that lasts only once throughout the game, so be sure to use it wisely. The Magic cards, you're always going to have two of them, and the Agenda cards, you're always going to have three of them. You can play one of each of these, one Magic and one Agenda, and the Magic card is going to cost a certain amount. It'll say three here, three magic. So if you have three magic, you can play it. As well as playing the agenda cards, they do different things as well. And once you've played them, you can't play anymore. But you can always draw one magic card if you spend one magic. And you can always draw an agenda card if you spend one gold. You can never have more than three, two, one in your hand at any point in time. And if you do, you have to discard down and then you can play. After you play a card, however, you're able to draw. So if I wanted to, I could spend a magic, draw a magic card, discard one down to two, play a magic card, and then draw up to two again. So that is how the cards basically work. Not only that, but you can also move your workers. And if you go ahead and spend one stability, you're able to move your workers wherever you want on the board. Obviously, provided that you're following the rules regarding the stability of the region. Not only that, but you can also upgrade. These are upgrade tiles here, and they're going to allow you to upgrade certain things throughout the game. Such as if you want to upgrade your war room, you're simply going to pay the cost, which is three, place this on top, and then 
bam, put that guy on there. Now you're going to have three for uh, creating your units. And you can do that with any of them, provided you're able to pay the cost. You're also able to recruit units. And you can only recruit units based on how many of these red markers you have. If you have more red markers, you can pl place as many units as you have more of. If you have three units and you lose a red marker at some point in time, you can't place any more. And in fact, you're going to have them revolt, which is nasty. But you can never draw, have more unless something like that happens. Uh, also, you're going to be able to establish trade routes. And trade routes are pretty interesting. I've gone ahead and shown you this is the location here or the, for where you're establishing trade routes, as well as this card agreement. When you choose to trade with somebody, you want to make an agreement with them, you would simply take one of their tokens and place it on here as well as one of yours. You're going to pay the cost. So if you look over here, it'll tell you what the different costs are for the different, uh, the different regions as well as the neutral one. And then you're going to have to pay the cost, both of you together. And after a certain period of time, you're going to gain favor as well as long as you're able to trade resources back and forth. It's a pretty useful aspect in the game. Uh, not only that, but you're also going to have a military alliances as well, which is right here. And it kind of functions in the same manner. After you've done all of your actions that you want to do, you're going to then pass your turn and everybody else is going to take that as well. This is the first phase, which is basically the tableau phase where you're going to try and manage your upkeep and whatnot, as well as being able to use your leader ability if you can. After this is done, you're going to go straight to the board and ask, and take the board phase aspect on. So everybody's gone ahead and taken all of their turns for their tableau aspect, and now we're going to the board phase. And the board phase is pretty simple. You're going to be using units that you have acquired and placed on the board during the recruiting phase, and you're going to be moving them. You can attack with them, you can conquer new territories, or you can visit uh, new dimensions as well as the island areas. Uh, and as you do that, you're going to be attacking, counterattacking, defending, uh, drawing cards to see what you can get, and also gathering new types of units that you can recruit for later use. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. It's pretty simple, but it's very important in the game. So here we are on the map phase. I've gone ahead and just taken a section here that we're going to be using, as well as pulled a couple things up on the board that won't be there. Like these guys are going to be on their uh, respective t kingdoms areas, but just so you guys can see it better, as well as these mana over here and some of these tokens over here. What will be here, however, are your locations, okay, as well as maybe the characters. So we're going to have moved in time here, basically, and this character is currently right here well the my characters are right here they can only spawn based on the back of the cards they're associated with so these guys are the darko characters so they are going to be spawning here whenever they are recruited now also they're going to have cards of characters and they're basically going to tell you how their stats the first stat is going to be your movement value your attack value your defense value how much damage they do and how much health they have the top left hand corner is their recruitment cost this guy would cost one gold and one food as well as sometimes you're going to have special attacks like this guy specifically here he's got all of his stats here but he also has a fear attack which i'll explain in combat but he'll be able to use that provided he rolls a special die and acquires what he needs so we're gonna go ahead and say it's my turn first uh, as, as green and i can show you that if i if i did go over here for my one movement because this character here has one movement uh he wouldn't be, be able to move over here now the more is basically a territory and these are territories over here and after you damage a territory three times you're going to be able to conquer that area you're going to get the territory card along with any of these agenda cards and you shuffle it into your deck and you can draw it, for, draw it for later use as well as the characters in that given territory these guys here that, that spawn on the moor when you recruit them so that's pretty cool uh, and, but you need to do three damage to it so you'd have to do a three three damage now you could do that via three different characters one character does three one character does two and one character does one it's up to you however you can only attack once so with this character specifically, it says it would do one damage. It would simply do its damage directly to the moor, which would in turn deal one damage to it. Some locations are going to have these fortifications. And if that happens, the one damage you'd be doing to the location would instead go to the garrison first, and then you'd have to do your three damage. So this character would take approximately three turns in order to take control of the moor if it was all by himself just trying to get this territory. In that case, though, you would get all that stuff and you'd put on your board. However, I'm not going to do that. So these actually are not going to be here, so they're irrelevant. But but if I was, just as an example, instead, I'm going to choose to move. Now, there's locations on the board. You've got this purple area here, which is going to be Mesedrin, which is the purple character, which is the shadow priest over here. And you've also, and these are all the different six locations on the board that you're going to be uh, using as, uh, depending on what character you are. You're going to have your dimensional areas. You've got your harbor areas over here. And then, of course, all of these uh, locations that have names, like here, here's the Mulishil and the Moor and Faranok. And these are the different locations you can go to collect these territories. Otherwise, you're just going to have these blank territories, which just involve a movement space. 
So if I want to, I would move these guys in here. They're both in here and they're both gonna attack the Shadow Priest because she is nasty, we wanna get rid of her. So how that would work is I choose a unit to go ahead and strike first. And I would choose maybe the Nomads here and the Nomads will get to use their attack die. She would get to use her defense die and they would both simply roll the dice. Bam, two attack, one defense. One plus one defense is two. Three plus two attack is five. Five beats the two, which means that his damage is gonna go through. All of his damage will go straight to her defense. She has one, uh, uh, so she has uh, four health minus the one attack. So she would take one point of damage, reducing her life point total to three. Then if she wanted to, she could attack back. However, you can only attack back once in a turn. So she might want to save that for an easier unit, a weaker one, which would be this one over here. So in turn, they would go ahead and do another attack. Oh, three defense, and this uh, and this has got two, so two plus two is four. Three plus one is four, tie goes to the defender, so they wouldn't take any damage. And in fact, she could go ahead and attack back. And simply uh, three against a three, which would be another tie. That would be it for the moving and attacking with, regarding these units. And um, she has done her defending, and she is still alive with three health. If it would then transition to her turn, or the purple player's turn, she could choose to move out and go into this location, because maybe she wants to go to this other dimension. However, when you exit a territory with other units in it, they're going to have an attack of opportunity, which means they can attack you as you leave. They get a free attack on you, which can be nasty and could kill you. Not only that, but uh, if she does survive that attack of opportunity for both these characters, she's then going to be able to go here. Now, whenever you want to go to a different dimension or you want to go to one of these locations over here, the uh, harbors, it's going to cost you. It'll cost you two magic to go ahead and draw one of these cards here. And then you're going to flip it over and do whatever it says. This one says it's going to remove a unit, a wound from any unit you control every single income phase, which is awesome. And you get to keep that. However, let's say she already had one of these out because she had acquired another one in a different area. Or this player did, then that, that would get every plus two fortifications. But you want another one, it would cost you the same two plus one for every additional one you had. So that would cost an additional one. And the same would go for these harbor areas. They'd be a little different. This one gives you plus one magic a turn, but it's gonna cost you two plus one additional gold for every single one you have. So it's just the difference between gold and, um, and magic for the locations. After every single player has had their turn to move all of their units to either fight, control territories, fight each other, as well as, um, as well as gain these different areas over here. Then the turn ends and they go back to the phase with the tableau increasing the upgrades and whatnot throughout the game. Also on a side note too, when you attack with multiple players on a singular one, just for even more reference, cause there's, I'm leaving a couple things out cause there's a lot of depth to this, but normally when you attack with one and another, they simply will do their damage. However, every additional unit you attack with is going to subtract a one defense from the unit that has been attacked already this turn. So if this unit has been attacked for the second time and it has one defense, the defense will go down to zero so just be aware of that especially if it has high defense it can only go down to zero it doesn't go down to negatives but it will go down from four three two one depending on how many units are attacking it not only that too but just before the phase goes where you're going to be doing your tableau phase again there's a trading phase that can happen in which you're going to be able to trade different resources now if you trade with the neutral units you can just trade whatever you want for whatever you want however when you're trading with other players because it involves that trade agreement aspect where you can get actually additional favor and whatnot you have to trade two different types of resources and you have to agree upon something if you can't agree upon something you don't get to trade however if you do that works just fine if you want to trade a gold for i don't know magic you could you could go ahead and do that wouldn't be an issue and after that just before the uh, the um the different tableau phase you're going to actually take your uh, marker from turn one to turn two and if it ever progresses to turn five, when it progresses to turn five, 10, 15, and 20, then you're going to take these event cards and draw them, and it's going to affect everybody in a unique way. All units not um, not within their kingdom's domain will suffer a wound, so if you have all your units in your domain, you're good, and if you don't, they all take damage. Or maybe the Towerman sightings, the ominous uh, return of a legendary cult has caused tremendous unease. All kingdoms lose a stability during upkeep. So these are just nasty events that can occur, or even maybe some positive ones throughout the game as you go through the tableau and the map phase. But that is the basic idea of how you play the game. And uh, as you can see, it's a larger one, Age of Kingdoms Luna, and it has a lot of different aspects to it. So let me go into a couple different caveats as well as what the different kinds of cards do uh, so you can get a better idea and understanding of what you're going to have in, uh, in your arsenal of things to use. Okay, so now a couple caveats before we explain how to get favor. First of all, there's a bunch of cards in your hand you're going to be using throughout the game, and obviously your character is going to tell you what cards he's going to have, whether it be for his virtues or 
his spells. It'll tell you exactly what is going to be included in that uh, specific leader's uh, cards. You can be able to choose from for the fav for the different spells and favors and whatnot. So you're going to have these uh, white cards, and this one here specifically, the one I chose, which is Ancestral Hymn, says a unit you control gains three attack and three defense, five temporary health, and two additional damage. Wow, that's really strong, and that's during the kingdom phase. You can also play spells, like this one here is Sp Spiritual Serenade, which is target a kingdom and they gain five mana. So that's going to help somebody else out, which is very good for the political aspect of the game when you play with more than two players. Or this one here, Song of Q2, which is target kingdom. The garrison for their entire domain is increased by two. Uh, you're also going to have these other two cards that you could have chose from, which is the Eldritch Nexus, which is you're going to draw 20 mana and leave it in play as a separate resource, and you can use them, which is really powerful. And also Majesty, all of your units gain one attack and one defense, and units you control may not be attacked by units with a lower attack score. If a unit can you control attacks under the unit with a lower defense, that unit may not roll its defense die. Another very powerful card. You're also going to be getting these cards here, which you'll be drawing from your deck. And this one here is Warlord's Command. It has that uh, symbol that says it's going to have a duration on it. It chooses uh, Draco unit, you may control attacks twice during the next map phase, or target a territory to which you have dealt uh, one or more occupation damage, you immediately receive that territory's yield, the territory controller loses one defense, and so on and so forth. There's quite a few of those cards. There's also the event cards, and I read a couple before, but I'll explain a couple more. So you've got stuff like the Bandit Warlord, a, bandit, a bandit's enterprise has become worldwide piracy for any trade made. Roll a special die. If the die result is a one star, all resources involved in that trade are lost, and no trade profit is collected. During upkeep, each player rolls a special die, and if its result is one star, they must lose two resources of their choice. So that can be bad for everybody. Or maybe the economic triumph. The merchant lords of Mayport have created a golden age of prosperity. Neutral trade routes have their maximum trade profit set to five. Any kingdom that interrupts trade, neutral trade immediately suffers three stability. And so there's more like that. Obviously, the other worlds of the other dimensions are going to give you things like maybe two attack power or uh, every income phase you remove a wound from your units or include plus two garrison and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different cards. They do a lot of different things. As well as every single one of these territories is going to give a card that you're going to be able to put into your deck, such as this one here, which is Contamination, and Target Kingdom removes a worker from their agriculture tile of your choosing, and so on and so forth. So there is a lot of stuff, and every single uh, faction leader has specific abilities and whatnot, so being able to choose those and combine them is very interesting and very unique. Not only that, but favor is how you win the game. Whoever has the most favor at the end of either round 10, 15, or 20, depending on how long you want to make the game, is going to determine the winner of the game. And every 5, 10, 15, and 20 uh, turns is going to have one of these neutral events happen that could be good or could be bad. You're going to be gaining favor by doing trade uh, by doing trade agreements and succeeding them with, for 3 favor. You gain military alliances, which is going to give you 3 favor. Whenever you betray an alliance, you can gain some favor, as well as whenever you kill the uh, Krees or Creels, they're basically killing the neutral units that are going to spawn, uh, declaring war, and then succeeding, you're going to gain like 9 favor, as well as if you uh, defend a warring... Uh, now, somebody who's going to war with you. At the end of the game, you're going to get points for every single upgraded tile you have in your board, as well as gaining points for every single um, territory you have on the board, so every territory that you've collected by placing down these tokens. At the end of the game, you're going to tally up all of these favors, including any favor you gain from the uh, the board itself, your, your tableau that you've uh, gained, like the temple space, or just simply gaining that favor at the beginning of the game. And if you have the most, you win the game. And that is how you play the game. Let me tell you what I think about the game. Okay, so Age of Kingdoms is kind of a tactical game that also has a tableau management system. It has a little bit of that Euro aspect where you're placing workers on a board, increasing the upkeep, and when you increase up keep, you're going to be able to gain new workers, has all those fun little different things in which you're going to be able to place new upgrades down on your board, and it is going to increase your upkeep, as well as increasing all of the different things you're going to start with, like gold, maybe you get three, four, five, depending on your upgrades. Also, you're only going to have a certain amount of space for different things, like gold, you only start, you can only have five, and then you have to get rid of the rest. However, if you increase your treasury, you can go up to 10, 15, and even 20, as well as being able to play additional spells on your turn, or draw additional spell cards. These map tiles here have a ton of stuff. And you can just go ahead and look through all of them. There's patrols plus one. You can have forts, armors, armor you can put on your units to pr protect them. The smithy, which gives you that weapon uh, priority or whatever. The sanctuary, which is your stability loss, minus one. Uh, casting additional spells per turn, drawing spells per turn, increasing your treasury, um, plus one to your active trade routes, and a bunch of other things as you 
upgrade these things. Uh, all your trade routes, depending on the different uh, factions you're going to be trading with, are going to include um, a price cost. And so, specifically, each and every faction is going to be able to trade with certain factions based on how much they've already previously liked each other, and you have to spend that money. So it's going to be a priority to trade with people that is going to be cheaper, as well as the neutral units. That is the cheapest way to go. And, up, like I said, up, upkeep. Upkeep is going to cost you money. And... Um, in, or food in order to keep uh, your workers as well as if you aren't able to pay for your units your military units you're going to have them go into revolt and revolt's not very good there's a lot of nasty things that can happen they can leave the board if you can't pay for them as well as your workers or some other things that can happen there as well for the most part that's the explanation and it all works very well it fits very fluidly and as you're playing the game you actually feel more of like a management game more than a tactical game there is a bit of war in the game and there is a lot of politics involved with deciding where you want to move and how you want to move. Do you want to go to the space and fight him or is it better to give him something so that way he's going to be your friend and leave you alone? You don't have to actually win the game. You don't need to uh, you won't need to win the game by starting war and all that kind of stuff. It does potentially help you gain favor and whatnot by succeeding in military combat, but you don't need to do it. You can simply worry about territory uh, gaining or simply worry about the economics of increasing your population, increasing your different uh, character boards by putting on these upgrade tiles. Every time you do that, it's going to gain you favor as well as just conquering the board is going to give you more bonus favor at the end of the game as well and you can gain upgrades with favor as well placing your units on the specific spots giving you favor so there's a lot of ways to win which is really really nice now that being said the game is complex there's a lot to it is a lot of setup and you need a lot of board space so if you're looking for a light game this is not going to be the game for you however if you like deep tactical games with a lot of tableau management and a lot of politics this is definitely going to be the game you should check out i really like this game as far as that's concerned and i think the sweet spot is probably about four players with two players it's nice however there's going to be certain characters you're not going to want to play specifically the draco one i was talking about with the commander he likes to give things to people and in return he will get stuff or in turn you could actually do some kind of politics and bartering and whatnot as far as trade routes go and that can benefit you but you don't want to play a two-player game where one is the warrior-like faction and one is the nice faction because that nice faction is not going to be able to politic with somebody who's definitely out to get them that being said with multiple players in the game it's going to give you that edge to be able to talk trade with people who are not maybe the warlike faction to keep them off of your back so they're fighting him and leaving you alone and that gives you that benefit as well drawing cards for spells is going to be very beneficial and a lot of the cards not only can help you in combat as well as upgrades and gold and whatnot but also you can kind of say hey i'm going to give you one favor if you're willing to spend this much gold and in turn if you do i'll gain three favor how does that sound for a person that's in last place that might be nice because at least going to give them something or vice versa maybe mana right uh, i'll give you five mana but i get to have three gold or two favor or whatever those kind of aspects in the game which are unique the game feels like you're sitting there looking at the board as a military commander's perspective you have your tableau you have your armies and you're now moving them across the board you feel like you're kind of pushing your armies with a little stick where you're going to war but you're not actually part of the war it's just happening all around you as you control the units at your helmstead you are the commander and you're the general and then they got the commanders underneath you that kind of dictate what you're going to do as well as the military units all of the units are very special and very unique and have a lot of special abilities and because of that there's a lot to the game so like i said th that's probably the one negative thing i guess i could say if you're not interested in a game that's very very thick and very lengthy because the game can be pretty long especially when you're first learning the game because i didn't explain everything i gave you a good idea of how to play the game and all the setup and whatnot but there's still more to the game which is also nice because you're going to begin uh in for a surprise as to how many different unique things are in the game. The artwork is great. This prototype copy is wonderful. I'm excited to see what it looks like later down the line. If I do get a copy, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the after product as well as the miniatures if it funds, which I hope it does, because the game all together is solid. I do suggest this game if you like tactics and military. It is a very fun game, and that is the best part of the game in my opinion. Not only just how it looks and the style of uh, adding cards to your deck as well as adding your unique different territory bases and whatnot so you can collect new resources and whatnot but also the units that you can spawn from them and they all have different abilities rolling the special action die is super cool as well because when you roll it you're going to have that chance to do a special ability like the witch she can actually push you away as opposed to trying to attack you if she doesn't get the roll she wants as well as a bunch of other units it is a hands down deeply strategic thought-provoking game some people might have a little bit of that analysis paralysis especially if you got a player who likes to think a lot because there is a lot of that involved in the game but otherwise a very solid choice and i definitely suggest you check it out in the description below
Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps. As well as checking out Laruna Age of Kingdoms. It's going to be on Kickstarter. This art is wonderful. And I love the fact that you have so much politicking in this game of strategy. And it's so interesting to see you peering down at the map and moving things around. It's not just tactics necessarily. It's tableau tactics. And it works really well. Now, that being said, you can go ahead and check it out in the description below. I'll tell you all about the Kickstarter and all that good stuff. As well as checking out my website, unfilteredgamer.com. Com, get some of the blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. As well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and my friend, personal friend, is the cardboard stacker Ferdinand. He does some great tutorial work. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this video. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.